there's 7 billion people in this world and I want to make them all happy, no matter what they identify as. I think breakfast is going to be the only meal of the day, folks. Well, if, it's, if there's maple syrup in it, that's a very complete day. I know very well that I can, in America, just purchase Canadian maple syrup, but there's, it's just going to hit differently here. I know it. Absolutely. Well, welcome back. <laughs> very glad to be back. The last time I saw you in concert, I think it was five years ago, 2017. You're doing two shows, Scotiabank Theatre, amazing performance. My daughter and I were living for you, and now in, in such a, a, a huge venue. Now you're currently on your one night only tour, much more intimate. Yeah. So how does it feel to be back on stage after all this time? It feels nice. I like playing the small shows just as much as I like playing the big shows um, because they all, they both have different um, qualities about them that are very affable to me. The smaller shows, I can see everyone's individual reactions and Obviously, I, I live for people's reactions when it comes to my music. Um, and where you saw me five years ago, um, God, I can't believe it's been that long. I know. <laughs> Performing for 15,000 people, uh, it's great because obviously you have like, you know, loud screams and you feel uh, uh, like people are really uh, involved in your music and it's it, it's special. It's, it's an event. Uh, but before we got back to those, I wanted to do just 12 shows in mm -hmm. special venues like the venue last night in Canada, which was over 100 years old. And I just wanted to test the waters with this new music after having not played a tour in over two years. So, you know, I, I have to ask, we're very passionate people. How do Canadian audiences differ from your audiences around the world? You are a very passionate people. You're also a very polite people. It's... <laughs> It's polite passion because the screams were louder than any show that I've played so far. Um, but it was also very orderly <laughs> and organized. <laughs> it was just so delightfully Canadian. Everyone was in their seat on time. It was it's it's you're you're all very nice to us. And right before we started the interview, well, you're having your almond cappuccino, and I understand you have a, a special Canadian twist in it. Yeah. A little maple syrup? Ooh, can I get some of that maple syrup? Actually, I'm going to put it in the, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, I didn't know that that was a thing you can do, but that's, you put maple syrup in coffee and now I do it all the time. I love the fact that, you know, you're, you're basically an honorary Canadian at this point, Charlie Puth. We're going to taste some of the maple syrup right now. <gasps> it's hot. Wow. You know what? It's not as sweet as it is in the States. You have to say it's delicious, eh? <laughs> it's delicious, eh? Yeah. No, that's seriously, it's heartier. It mm. is. Well, you know, nothing like, but the best in Canada. Wait, what? You guys don't like drinking maple syrup from? No. Oh my God, it's delicious. <laughs> So let's let's talk Charlie. Let's talk congratulations on your new fabulous album. Why was this a good time, you know, to have a, a self-titled project? Because it's it's a self-titled project that allows me to travel to Toronto to get some fresh maple syrup <laughs> to drink from the source. That is so good. Um, it's in all seriousness, it's nice to have a self-titled project out. That means a lot to me. It's self-produced. I had to I couldn't be around a ton of people. Um, during the pandemic, obviously, mm -hmm. when writing the album. So it was written by maybe three people and myself. Um, and uh, uh, just, I handled all the production and I had to, it was tough at some times because I had to sit in a room by myself and come up with songs and ideas, but it was all worth it because I performed last night in Toronto and they all, they sang every single word back to every song. And I remember where I was when I wrote every song as well. Uh, it's very special. It's like a celebration of music. You know, you, you mentioned the pandemic and, and being sometimes in isolation. How do you think your writing has evolved? Because this is your first album since lockdown. I, I, I think I've become, I've grown more into myself. And I think there was a time period and uh, maybe this happens to everybody, but there was a time period where I was putting up a little bit of a front, just a little bit of a front, uh, a little bit of a thin layer of brick wall to the real me. 
and now you can just walk right in. Here I am. This is my album. These are 12 songs about a specific time period in my life um, where I experienced a lot of uh, devastation and bitterness as a result, but also happiness at the same time. And it's the 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 instruments that I chose in all of these songs musically are reflected in that as well um, as the lyrics. Well, you just dropped your video for Loser. And so I'm curious, I, I love the whole Western inspired vibe. What inspired that aesthetic? Just being a goofball. The song has, <laughs> the, the video has nothing to do with the song. The song <laughs> is a very sad song, very self-deprecating anthem of where you think that you've lost someone who's added great value to your life. But the video is like a naked gun, Leslie Nelson airplane, like Western. It's like Police Academy. Um, it's a little bit absurd. There truly is nothing. Everyone's like, what's the secret meaning behind this video and the song? And the answer is, it's just we just had a budget and we wanted to have fun. <laughs> and I, <laughs> want, I wanted to be a cowboy. And bringing up Leslie, you know, inspired by another Canadian. That's right. I am very it's inspired. Full circle. <laughs> I am very inspired by Canadians. And uh, you guys have a really, really strong, firm hold on uh, culture in, in the West as well, and in <laughs> musically and everything. And maple syrup. Uh, mm. Love it. Next time we see you in person, we're going to have a whole maple syrup package for you. Have to. So all different kinds. So from all it, it tastes yes. like sugar. They put too much sugar in it in the United States. It, that is how it's supposed to taste. We love to hear it. You know, you mentioned culture, and uh, you've gone on record saying that the LGBTQ plus culture is ahead of its time, culturally, sonically, musically, everythingly. How has the community inspired your sound and your artistry? I kind of made that word up at the end. Everything. I like that. Culture. For everyone studying the dictionary, that's not a word. Um, just everyone who is a part of um, a, a, a part of that umbrella is just celebrating their life. And there's a lot of people who aren't even under that umbrella or who celebrate that life. I'm inspired by them uh, uh, as well. I, I just want to be around happy people. And that's where I find the happiest people are. And I also live very close by to West Hollywood. So if I am in need of some inspiration, just I, I have to drive through it to uh, get to the studio. It's just I it, it, it kind of is just like there's 7 billion people in this world. And I want to make them all happy, no matter what they identify as or who they identify as I just there's there's always room for a little quarter note, a little eighth note, nice chord progression, nice drum beat for everybody in everybody's life. And I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to complete that sentence for everybody. You know, uh, back to the album, a lot of the songs on Charlie, like Marks on My Neck, touch on heartbreak and relationships. And you mentioned, you know, about Loser and, and where you are at the time of writing certain songs. Are you still in that same place today? Or is it just kind of like that was a moment in your time, moment of time in your life, and you put that there, and now you're sharing it with the world? How does that? It, it, was, a, it was a moment. It was a very important moment in time. And when you listen to the record from start to finish, and it's not a very long record, it's from about 32 minutes, from that's hilarious to uh, there's a first time for everything that smells like me, bitter, resentment, trying to figure out how trying to navigate my way through this difficult situation of um, leaving people behind who I once thought were my friends that didn't turn out to be my friends leaving uh, uh, friends in business friends in romantic relationships friends in regular relationships. I, I had to navigate the waters myself and at the very end I had no more drama in my life I figured it out. And it's very fun to celebrate that. That was a really important time in my life because it propelled me to the next level of me. I'm 30, I'll be 31 on December 2nd. And I needed to experience those things to become a better version of myself. And I, I guess listening to this album, it's it's very cool. Um, it, it's like a picture book um, looking in the past of where, um, knowing where I came from. I love when you're able to 
as you know, as humanity, we're able to peel back those layers and just go forward in life, just so much lighter, lighter, yes, and spreading light. I, I feel a lot lighter. Good place to be. Good place to be is also on your TikTok, <laughs> really living for your posts. Chaos. And yeah, well, and but fun chaos. And and for this album, you know, you really previewed a lot of the tracks and on on there as you were creating them. So how has that changed the the rollout process for you around Charlie? Well, there's no rollout process anymore. I just <laughs> if, I, if I come up with the song, I'm going to I'll let the label know moments before really all about the listeners and um the people that want to express themselves through music through my music um you got to get it out to them as soon as possible and uh you know that might change in the in the future but for right now uh i really love involving my fans in every step of the way and uh it it's worked uh, i i was performing last night they were singing every lyric back to every single song um, just the power of involving people from the get-go. Okay, before I let you go, I know you're booked and busy and you've got some maple syrup, more maple syrup to consume. Uh, any last words for your Canadian fans? I love my Canadian fans and we're gonna give you uh, something even bigger and better next year. And uh, I'm not gonna wait four years to put out another record. I'm gonna get started on the, the, uh, the next one right away. And you'll hear from me on TikTok. Okay, we, we love to hear it and see it. And again, you come into eTalk in person, we're going to have a basket of maple syrup for you. I promise, Charlie Puth. <laughs> I will drink it and gross my team out. Okay, <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you so much. Like the video? Then hit the button. Or better yet, drop us a comment. Then check out our latest videos here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.